All right, as Moles Witch Hunt continues, you might remember the great one, Mark Levin, right here on this show last summer, explaining the DOJ policy that says a sitting president cannot be indicted. This is something the media kind of forgets. Take a look. It's been the position of the United States Department of Justice under Republicans and Democrats in a 1973 memorandum and an October memorandum under the Clinton administration that you must not, cannot indict a sitting president. Not that this president would be, that's not my point. As a matter of constitutional interpretation, for 44 years, that's been the position of the Department of Justice. We've had law professors, homeless people, would-be law professors, all over TV and radio talking about obstruction of justice. We've had media types talking about it. We've had members of Congress talking about it. It doesn't matter. The official position of the Justice Department is we don't charge a sitting president with a crime. Now, Mark reiterated that point on this show just a few weeks ago. You may remember. A sitting president's amenability to indictment and criminal prosecution, the indictment or criminal prosecution of a sitting president would unconstitutionally undermine the capacity of the executive branch to perform its constitutionally assigned functions. Page after page after page saying a sitting United States president cannot be indicted. Now, my question is this. Did they issue another memo over there at the Justice Department reversing these two memos during the Nixon administration and the Clinton administration? No. He joins us himself with reaction, the host of CRTV's Levin TV, the host of Life, Liberty and Levin, the number one show Sunday nights, 10 Eastern, right here on the Fox News Channel. I call him the great one, uh, Mark Levin. I wanted to play that again because as usual on legal matters, you're ahead of the curve. You are a constitutional attorney and our lazy, overpaid liberal activists that call themselves journalists are wrong like 99% of the time. So I want to go through this legally tonight and give you the opportunity to explain it to them yet again. All right, Sean. This is not me speaking. This is the Department of Justice speaking. And the position of the Justice Department has not been repealed and has not been amended since uh, the, the last decision on October 16, 2000. The President of the United States, this is getting way too complicated and unnecessarily so. You've got a lot of second tier, slip and fall lawyers all over TV spewing things they don't know. They don't understand the Constitution. They haven't studied the cases. I have. First of all, this opinion says, among other things, that grand juries and prosecutors cannot supplant Congress. They cannot supplant Congress. The only way to remove a sitting president is through the impeachment process, not through the indictment process. They cannot disable or hamstring a presidency, which is what they're trying to do as I speak. A prosecutor cannot trigger the 25th Amendment. The 25th Amendment is the purpose is not to be triggered by a prosecutor, and he can't step in and try and take advantage of it. These are things that were discussed. The president cannot properly defend himself in litigation under the Constitution as an individual American uh, when he has time that he has to spend on official duties. Unlike uh, so many other individuals, a president of the United States, they point out, is so unique in our constitutional system that it is enormously damaging to him because he can't focus on his defense, which is different than civil litigation, and he can't focus during that time on the nation's security and well-being. And the presidency can't function properly with these kinds of burdens. This is what the memo says. He cannot be indicted as a sitting president, period. This is why, despite all the pablum about what well, presidents have received subpoenas before, tell me, name one president who's ever been before a federal grand jury. There's never been a president in front of a federal grand jury. Ken Starr's team subpoenaed Bill Clinton for having, among other things, not sex so much with an intern in the Oval Office, but lying about litigation that was taking place. And uh, he was subpoenaed, and he decided to do a video. So here's my advice to the President of the United States, who didn't seek it, and to his lawyers. Focus. You're making this too complicated. The Constitution is on the side of the President. The Department of Justice's own position, which you can brief yourselves, is on the side of the President of the United States. Historical precedent is on the side of the President of the United States. Legal precedent is on the side of the President of the United States. 
Stop listening to all the babbling, the, you know, pleading the fifth, and should he sit down with a subpoena? I would say if I were the president's lawyer to Mr. Mueller, we want you to present us with an explanation of your defiance of the Department of Justice policy, which you are required to follow as an employee of the Department of Justice. Moreover, we want to understand how it is that you believe that you can burden a president like this while he's in office. And while I'm at it, Sean, we seem to have a few Republicans in the Senate who are very confused about these things, who have voted to protect Mr. Mueller rather than protect the office of the presidency, the Constitution, the, uh, and the American people. And they seem to think that they have the power, even though they, we have separation of powers, to tell a president who we can hire and who we can fire. Uh, the part of the problem the president has is he's dealing with ignoramuses, both inside his party and outside his party, and some of whom are dressed up as lawyers. So I would take this all the way to the United States Supreme Court. I would make Mueller and his band of Democrat prosecutors make their case all the way to the United States Supreme Court. Uh, if they try to subpoena him uh, in any way to appear before a federal grand jury and make them make their case against their own Department of Justice, against Supreme Court precedent, and against the Constitution of the United States. And if it takes six months, it takes six months. And if it takes six years, then by God, it takes six years. We're not just talking about the president, which would be enough. We're talking about protecting the office of the presidency, separation of powers. And when you look at those 49 areas of questions, there's not a single criminal statute. There's not a single obstruction. What has been obstructed? They're not investigating Russia? What is it that they're not investigating that they don't want to investigate? No. They want to know his intent on whether he obstructed. They want to, they want to treat him like they treated Martha Stewart. Well, guess what? He's the president, Mr. Mueller. This isn't one of your failed anthrax cases or one of your failed Whitey Borger cases. This is the president of the United States. You know what that means? We the people have a stake in this. We the people get to decide. The framers decided the only way you remove a president is through the body politic, through the House and the Senate. And it's a heavy burden, not by some rogue prosecutor with a bunch of Democrat prosecutors. They don't get to do it. And the people need to rise up and demand demand that this go all the way to the Supreme Court to put these rogue prosecutors in their place. That's why I call you the great one. Uh, this abusively, politically biased, and frankly, ethically challenged Mueller team, there's the answer. Mark Levin, every Sunday night, 10 Eastern, Life, Liberty, Levin. Thank you, sir.